Today's message on this Palm Sunday is entitled, Three Declarations of Triumph. Three Declarations of Triumph. Of course, Palm Sunday marks the triumphal entry of Jesus Christ into Jerusalem, where he was publicly declaring himself to be the Messiah. Turn with me to Luke, the Gospel of Luke, chapter 19, verse 37. And it reads, Then, as he was now drawing near the descent of the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of the disciples began to rejoice and praise God with a loud voice for all the mighty works that they had seen, saying, Blessed is the King who cometh in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. And some of the Pharisees called to him from the crowd, saying, Teacher, rebuke your disciples. But he answered and he said to them, I tell you that if these should keep silent, the stones would immediately cry out. I'm not going to let the rocks do my praising for me. I'm going to praise him. I'm going to magnify him. Anybody with me this morning? I'm going to lift up the name of Jesus Christ. Rocks aren't going to have to praise for me. I'm going to cover it. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Praise the Lord. Well, Palm Sunday marks the triumphal entry into Jerusalem that the Lord made. It started the Passion Week. The Passion Week is the final week of the Lord's ministry on earth just before the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. At the beginning of the week, it was all praise, it was all worship, it was all jubilation. It was a triumphal entry. By the end of the week, they were crying, crucify, and they did crucify. They did bury him, but I want you to know the grave could not hold him. He is the resurrected Lord. He is alive forevermore. He is seated on the right hand of the Father. He is the Lord God Almighty. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Now, it's interesting to note that when Jesus was riding on the colt into Jerusalem, he was declaring himself to be the Messiah. And for many years, many centuries, since the writing of the psalm, it was the tradition that at the Feast of Passover, and that's what this feast was, at the Feast of Passover, that the multitudes would chant Psalms 118. They would do it in unison. This is a messianic psalm. There are many messianic psalms, and by messianic psalms, really, they are prophetic utterances that refer to a specific person, the Messiah. We see him as Jesus Christ. He is the Messiah. He is the King of the Jews, the Son of God. And so in Psalms 118, and, and I want you to go there right now if you would, beginning in verse 26, we have a great revelation for the faith-filled believer. But understand that this is what the, the multitudes were rejoicing and shouting and crying out as they laid their eyes on their Messiah, on Jesus Christ. Psalms 118, verse 24. They shouted, they declared, they rejoiced, saying, This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Save now, I pray, O Lord. O Lord, I pray, send now prosperity. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. We have blessed you from the house of our Lord. Amen. Tremendous. And as they shouted those verses in unison, they would wave their palm branches. You say, why palm branches? Because in verse 27, it is clear in the Amplified. I'll just read it to you. In the Amplified, it makes a reference to, it says, decorate the festival with leafy boughs or leafy limbs. And so they would wave the palm branches in accordance with verse 27 of Psalms 118. When Jesus 
came in on the colt. They laid their garments on the path in honor of him, reverence of him. They didn't even want his foot to get dirty. They, they waved the palm branches before him in adoration in accordance with the psalm. They cried out before him, blessed is he who cometh in the name of the Lord. What, what a magnificent moment. Jesus was declaring his Messiahship publicly. But it was not only Jesus declaring his, his Messiahship. For his inner circle, the apostles were declaring his, his Messiahship. I mean, if you look at the body of Scripture, you see that his apostles declared him to be Messiah. The, the larger band of disciples, the multitudes, declared him to be the Messiah. In fact, Jesus said, nature will declare me to be Messiah. The rocks will cry out if no one else cries out that I am the Messiah. When you look at Scripture, all the prophetic utterance that was declaring him to be the Messiah. In fact, if you look at Daniel's timeline, his prophecy of the weeks, to the day when Jesus rode into Jerusalem, if you simply just did the math from Daniel, you would see that this is the Messiah coming into Jerusalem. Even Jesus' enemies were calling him the Messiah. For Pontius Pilate said, this is the king of the Jews. And he nailed the placard above the Lord's head. But I want you to know today, even though the prophets declared it, even though the disciples declared it, even though his enemies declared it, even though devils declared it, the most important declaration I will make today is I I declare that Jesus Christ is Lord of Lords and King of Kings. He is the Messiah. Fully God. Fully man. Hallelujah. That is my declaration as I celebrate the triumphal entry of Jesus Christ into my heart, into my life. Glory to God. How about you? I said, how about you? Can you say praise the Lord? Can you say glory to God? How about thank you, Jesus? Hallelujah. Now, from Psalms 118, the, the passage that we just read, verses 24 through 26, Psalm 118, I see in there, there are three fantastic declarations of triumph. We're talking about the triumphal entry of Jesus into Jerusalem. Three declarations of triumph or three declarations of faith. And, and I understand that it applied to that moment in time when Jesus rode into Jerusalem. But the sentiment is exactly the same. The faith still applies to our life today. The principles still apply. So even though that was a reference to 2,000 years ago, it is just as valid today. Come on, say amen. And so we see in there three declarations of triumph that we can make daily. We should make daily. And here is the first one. It begins, this is the day that the Lord has made. That is one of the greatest faith statements that you can ever make. That, hey, this is the day that the Lord has made. Now, this is it. Have you ever said before, and, and uh, I think we just made reference to it earlier with the Next Generation building, we're so close, we're, so, we're right at the threshold, and, and you just say, you know what, it's got to happen today, this is the day, this is the day that, that, you know, faith, let me tell you about faith, faith in, 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 uh, in Hebrews 11 and 1 says, now faith is, now, faith is a now thing, it's a present tense thing, well here is present tense as well, this is the day present day. God is going to do something magnificent today. Hallelujah. This is the day that the Lord has made. Right now. Faith is right now. This is the day. You should get up every single day and say, this is my day. God made this day. I'm so happy about today. Oh, Roberts used to say something good is going to happen today. Hallelujah. And you need to get out of bed every morning and say something good is going to happen today. 
Debbie went to visit her sister when her, when her great niece was very tiny, just a little tiny girl. Now she's in her teens, but back when she was just a little tiny thing, and she was spending the, the night at grandma so Debbie could see her. her Debbie's sister is her grandma, and so uh, the little girl's grandma, and so she was staying at the house. And so Debbie and uh, her, her grandniece got up early in the morning before everybody got up, and Debbie said, let me show you how to get up in the morning, the way you're supposed to get up in the morning. And she said, okay. And she can't say Debbie. She said Dobby back then. Okay, Aunt Dobby. And so uh, Debbie said, this is how you do it. You run up and down the halls and you say as loud as you can, house, are you up yet? House, are you up yet? House, are you up yet? And Gail comes flying out of her bedroom. <laughs> and she said, oh, Gail is up. And Gail said, thanks, Debbie, so much. <laughs> So that's been kind of, that's the kind of the running joke in, in the Watts household. House, are you up yet? In other words, are you ready for the day? This is going to be a great day. Let's get up. Let's do this thing. Let's make this day count. Hallelujah. The other day, Debbie was sleeping in. She hardly ever gets to sleep in. It was just one of those rare days that she got to sleep in. And uh, so I got up to make some coffee. The girls got up. The, by girls, I mean dogs got up with me. And uh, I, they made coffee with me and for, for Mama. And, and uh, they had their, their breakfast. And I said, girls, hey, house, are you up yet? House, are you up yet? Let's go see if Mama's up yet. And so I grabbed them both, and they're small. I can them under each arm. And so we creeped into, into, the, into Debbie's bedroom, and I had a dog under each arm. And there she was, sleeping, sleeping, sleeping. So I put him right on top of her head, and I said, Hey, House, are you up yet? <laughs> and you know what Debbie did? She pulled the blanket up over her head. She said, The house is not up. The house is not up. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hey, don't dish it out if you can't take it. I'll tell you what. Praise the Lord. This is the day that the Lord. Now, who made the day? The Lord. The Lord made the day. That makes a big difference. When the Lord makes the day, He makes it awesome. Yeah. He, whatever God makes, and He made you in His image, whatever God makes, He makes awesome. God does masterful work. He's an artist, hallelujah. And He made this day just for you, with you in mind, with purpose and blessing and promise. I'm telling you what, He did not, God never overlooks a day. God never go. He never skips a day, overlooks a day, never treats a day idly. Every single day that the Lord makes is a masterpiece. His fingerprint is on it. He has signed the canvas at the very bottom, and He wants you to be blessed today, right now. He wants you blessed in this day. Hallelujah. Now, I will tell you that there are many, many artists, but there are very few masters. Come on, say amen. amen. I will tell you, there's many, many cars, but there's very few classics. I'll tell you, there's a lot of jewelry, but there's very few crown jewels. Come on, say amen. amen. Among the instruments, there's a lot of instruments, but a, a few are Steinways. A few are Stradivariuses. Come on, you know what I mean. Why? Why are they so masterful? Why are they so great? Because of who made them. I said, because of who made them. When a master paints a painting, it is a masterpiece. When Cartier cuts a diamond, it is a masterpiece. Come on, are you all with me this morning? When the Lord makes the day, it is a masterpiece. And he has made today with you in mind. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. I said, house, are you up yet? Yes. Come on, house, are you up yet? Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice. Thank you, Lord. God made it. Now, I have often taught a principle 
that faith kind of flows in a 24-hour cycle. That does not mean you have to get born again every 24 hours. It doesn't mean that yesterday's victories do not count. Yesterday's victories are a wonderful springboard and launching pad for today's victories. But yesterday is yesterday. Today, your faith is a now thing. Now faith is. This is the day. Now, listen, you want to make sure that your faith is strong today. Glory to God. Come on, somebody. Jesus taught us to pray the Lord's Prayer. He said, give us this day. This is how he taught us to pray. Father, Father, give us this day our what? Daily. daily. Everybody say daily, daily bread. In other words, you need fresh manna every single day. Glory to God. He said, if you're going to follow me, you need to take up your cross daily Come on, daily and follow after me. It describes the church in the, in the book of Acts. It says that they communed and broke bread and had fellowship together daily in one accord in the temple. There's something about that 24-hour cycle. You know it says in Psalm 60, 68 that the Lord loads us daily with benefits. Have you received your daily load of the Lord's benefits? Come on. God wants you today to realize the tremendous opportunities that are availed unto you because of the finished work of Christ on the cross. He has saved you. He has healed you. He has given you peace. He has, come on, church. He has done everything necessary for you to be blessed. Hallelujah. And now he wants to load you daily with all of those benefits. Glory to God. The prophet said that his mercies and his compassions do not fail. They are new every morning. Every morning. This is the day. That's why the, the poet way long ago said, Carpe diem, seize the day. You got to seize the day. You got to get hold of the day and don't let go of the day. This is my day. I'm the head, I'm not the tail. I'm more than a conqueror. I'm an overcomer. I'm a tree planted by rivers of living water. I, my leaf will not wither. I'll bring forth fruit. This is my day. You got to seize the day. You got to get hold of the hem of his garment and not let go. You got to have a little bit of junkyard dog in your bunk that when you get hold of something, you're not going to let go of it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, man. Debbie gave our girls, by girls I mean dogs, Debbie gave our, our two little dogs. Now, they only weigh 10 pounds, but she gave them little chew bones. And uh, gave them little chew bones. And, and one of our dogs has uh, one tooth, but she has a big attitude. And uh, <laughs> she's got one tooth. She loves her chew bone. And, uh, but she's got one tooth, but she's got a big attitude. And so I saw that Debbie giving her a bone. And I said, oh, I said, you've got a chew bone. Isn't that great? And you know what she said to me? She said, <laughs> In other words, back off, pal. It's my, it's my chew bone. Now, I could have looked at her and said, hey, you're 10 pounds with one tooth. What can you do? I, I can get that bone if I really want that, if I really want that bone. But I thought, no, I'm going to build faith in her a little bit. I said, I'm backing off, baby. I'm backing off. That's your bone. I said, there's a junkyard dog. There's a wild wolf in the house. She's got her bone. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Run for your lives, everybody. How did the wolf get in the house? Praise the Lord. Crazed animal. Crazed animal. Praise the Lord. Seize the day. This is the day. This is the day that the Lord has made. You know what? You, you got to get, get in by faith. You got to get into your declaration. Got to get into your faith declaration. I am going to get the blessings of the Lord out of this day. I'm going to advance the cause of Christ today. I'm going to receive my miracle, my breakthrough. I'm going to receive the promise of God. I Come on, everybody. I'm going to grow in faith. I'm going to grow in grace. I've got the devil whooped. He is under my foot. I'm, come on. I am going to grow. This is my day. I said, this is my day. So that's declaration number one. Uh, this is the day that the Lord 
has made. Declaration number two is we will rejoice and be glad in it. That is the second declaration of triumph or faith uh, for your Christian life. We will rejoice and be glad in it. You've got to set your mind, you've got to set your attitude, you've got to set your faith to the idea that this day is going to be a day of rejoicing. Now stay with me for a second because I understand that there's battles. We go through battles. Not every day is, is uh, sunshine and rainbows, you understand. Not every day is a stroll through uh, a, the park. Uh, sometimes we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, but I thank God that we don't camp out in the valley of the shadow of death. We're getting through the valley of the shadow of death and he said we will rejoice and be glad in it now that word rejoice in the original language means to spin around with great emotion so it is not rejoice as in I'll, I'll crack a smile and give a little little clap no that it is is jumping it is spinning around it is shouting it is rejoicing with great emotion in other words the emotion is so great on the inside of you the joy is so big that you can't stand still you got to jump up you got to spin around hallelujah can you imagine that when the Lord came marching in on, on the back of the colt, he came down the path, that the, the disciples were so happy that they were spinning around, they were shouting, they were rejoicing, they could not contain themselves. Hallelujah. We will rejoice and be glad. That word to be glad means to brighten up, it means to cheer up, brighten up. Now, I understand there's times when it's the midnight hour and you're, you're, so to speak, spiritually speaking, in the innermost prison like Paul and Silas. But what do they do? They, they praise God in the midnight hour. And God swung the gates off and shaked the, the chains off and sent the angel. I'm telling you what, it, it, that's when you find out how deep the river flows. That's when you find out how deep the well goes. That's when you find out where you are in, the, in your faith and where you are in the Lord. That it, when it's the hardest, can you let the joy of the Lord rise up on the inside? Nehemiah said, the joy of the Lord is my strength. Hallelujah. The joy of the Lord brings strength to your spiritual life. Listen, we go back to the finished work of Christ on the cross and we say, hey, wait a second. The devil that is, to that is tormenting me is a defeated foe. The sin that is knocking at my door is a defeated foe. I'm going to get my joy on. I'm going to put on the garments of praise. I'm going to take off the spirit of heaviness. I'm going to start rejoicing. I'm going to start shouting. I'm going to get happy. I'm going to get glad. And that means to brighten up. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. To brighten up in that same passage in Psalms 118 still. In verse 15, it says, The voice of rejoicing and salvation is in the tents of the righteous. One of your translations says, in the sanctuary of the righteous. I'm so glad that in this sanctuary, we like to praise God. I'm so glad that there's celebration in the house, that there's the joy of the Lord in the house. Every time Debbie and I come to church, we pray in the car on the way down. We pray, God, let there be celebration in the house. Let the joy of the Lord be released in the house. Hallelujah. I tell you what, I'm a praiser. Uh, we get here early, we prayed, we worshiped, and then we get to church. And I'm, I'm the loudest one in here. I'm praising, I'm worshiping, then I preach. I preach, then I go rest. And then I come back and I praise and I worship some more with everything that is within me. And then I preach, hallelujah. <laughs> Why? Because... Because I got some joy on the inside. I got some gladness on the inside. There's a spirit of celebration. There's a party going on inside of me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But the important thing to note is it says we will rejoice and be glad. I, I think the idea of rejoicing and be glad, it, the attitude of faith is so crucial. You know, you, you've heard that uh, attitude is the key thing or attitude determines altitude. There's all sorts of saying. But it is true that if you can turn the corner on attitude and get a grasp on the joy of the Lord, which is your strength, and not let the devil, uh, let the devil steal your joy from you, you've got the victory. Let me tell you, you got, 
Faith and joy go together. Faith and joy. That's why uh, we love to hang out with positive people. People that say, yeah, you know what? That can be done. All things are possible to those who love the Lord. The, uh, you know, God can do anything. To, to hang out with folks that say, you know what, Pastor? We can do that. Rather than, you know, I don't know, Pastor. Church is young. Church is small. I don't know if, that, if that's possible. I want you to know something. We may be young, but we act like we've been around forever. We, we may be small right now, but we're getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger every single Sunday. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I mean, we may be 400 and something right now, but it, it, we could be 800 just like that. I said, just like that. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Now, the interesting thing here where it says we will rejoice and be glad in it, it says we will. This is an act of will. We will rejoice. In other words, even if you don't feel like rejoicing, you just go ahead and set your mind to it. I'm going to rejoice today because God made this day. This is the day the Lord has made. And I am determined I'm going to be happy in this day. I'm going to be victorious in this day. I'm going to be an overcomer in this day. I will rejoice. You know, sometimes you have to talk to your own spirit. You have to tell your soul, hey, soul, house, are you up yet? You got to tell, you tell your soul, hey, it's time to rejoice. David told, David told himself, bless the Lord. Psalms 103. Bless the Lord, oh, my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, oh, my soul, and forget not all his benefits. You know what? When, when other folks aren't cheering you on you got to cheer yourself on well who is David talking to when he says bless the Lord oh my soul He's talking to himself he's saying soul bless the Lord <laughs> he's saying soul bless the Lord and sometimes you got to look in the mirror and you got to say friend of mine meaning yourself you need to start blessing the Lord and you got to say to yourself, you need to start getting happy. You need to start rejoicing. You need to be glad. Come on. You need to. You cannot let this day go by. Now, I know what you're thinking because I've been there. Every single one of us have. Where you, It's Monday morning and the alarm didn't go off. And now you're late and you had a big meeting with the boss on Monday morning and the bus has already left and you don't have time to make your sack lunch and, and it just everything's going wrong and you just want to pull the covers up over your head and say, I'll wait till Tuesday. <laughs> have you ever been there? All of us have. All of us have. But you know what you need to do instead? You need to throw that sheet back. You need to jump out of that bed like you are a superhero. And you need to say, I'm not going to let the devil have this day. It hasn't been a great start, but it's going to be a great finish. And I'm going to win this thing. And the devil is a defeated foe. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I said, hallelujah. hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We will, as an act of will, we will rejoice and be glad in Him. Now, here's, here's the third declaration of triumph. Number three, in the same psalm, verse 25, it says, Save now and send now prosperity. Save and send. Say, send what? Prosperity. Save me now, O oh Lord, I pray. O oh Lord, I pray. Send now prosperity. The amplified version of the same verse adds on a, a little tag on the end. It says, save, send now prosperity, and give us success. Amen. The word save means to be free. Or to open up, like open up the prison gates. To be free. It means to preserve and rescue and help and be safe. And to get the victory. Save. Get the victory. And the word prosper, prosperous now, prosper means to push forward. It means to break out. It means to go over. How many of you would like to have breakout prosperity? 
I mean so much prosperity that it is breaking out of your bank account. That you got more than you could ever imagine. I mean, it is flowing up and out of your life like a fountain of blessings. Glory to God. Break out prosperity more than abundantly above all that you could ask or think. Wouldn't that be great? This is, this is what they're asking God. They're saying, now this is what they voiced to the very Messiah when he was coming into Jerusalem. From their voice, their mouth to his ears, literally, as he was passing in front of them, they already had the script given to them from the psalmist. And they said to the Lord, they said, Lord, save us means give us the victory. Lord, prosper us means give us breakout blessings and give us success. Now, if it was okay for them to say that to the Lord when they're actually in His presence. Isn't it okay for believers in the Lord Jesus Christ, for members of the church, for the faithful to lift up their voices to the heavens and say, Lord, save us. Give us the victory. Lord, prosper us with breakout blessings. Lord, give us good success. When? Now. Now. Everybody say, now. Everybody say, now. This is the day. I want it today, Lord. I want the blessing now. Why? How? Pastor, where did you come up with that? Just read it. Pastor, is it okay to say that? They did it. Pastor, is that all right? Yes, it is. Now, this is the day that the Lord has made. Lord, now, in this day, now, give me the victory now. Give me the prosperity now. Give me the success now. That word now means an emphatic right now. Not talking about little cabin in glory. We're talking about now. Do you hear me? We're talking about now. Yeah, that's going to be great then. But now, this is the day. That's the, this is the day we're talking about now, today. Now. Hallelujah. 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 Send now. Everybody say, send now. Send now. Prosperity. Send now prosperity. Send now prosperity. Send now prosperity. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, this is how they closed it, and this is how we'll close it. They closed it with a blessing. And in verse 26, they said, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. That he who is coming in the name. In the name of means in the power, in the authority, with the assignment, with the commission. Comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed. Blessed. Worthy of adoration. Blessed. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. And then I love this line. We have blessed you from the house of the Lord. This is, uh, God spoke to our heart almost the day that we began this ministry he said build a house of worship and ever since that we've had any meeting that we have blessed his holy name we have worshipped him we have sought to bless him from the house of the Lord Amen. there are three declarations of triumph in that song number, psalm that number one is this is the day that the Lord has made that's your first declaration number two I will rejoice and be glad in it. And number three, save now, send now, prosperity, give us good success. Did you get anything out of this today? Praise the Lord.